Very good. We have a question from a viewer in uh, Traverse County who wants to uh, talk about higher education. The specific question leads us in that direction, and we're going to talk more generally about it, but the specific question from our viewer is that uh, that viewer notes that the University of Minnesota is a land-grant college supported by taxpayers, <coughs> but this viewer is aware that it's an entity unto itself and wonders if that interferes with the ability to manage the university. And, of course, um, just so that our viewer understands what going on there. Our state constitution specifically provides for the University of Minnesota, and that, um, to some extent, sets them apart. But there's always tension between uh, how the university wants to run that land-grant institution and what the legislature or the governor uh, might have to say or want to say about that. And uh, I don't know that the lines are necessarily crystal clear. But I think that is an open entree to talk about higher education and where that might go. So let's go to you, Senator Franzen, and what do you see happening in this session on that? Sure. So I, to the viewer's question, it, it, in my view, it's, it's about accountability. So I served on, H on higher education for two years, <coughs> and, um, you know, the, the University of Minnesota is land-grant. It's, mm -hmm. it's our prize and joy, and along with mm -hmm. many other um, higher ed organizations that we have, or, um, that we have in Minnesota. But to, to the viewer's point, when they're in trouble, I mean, we have our duty to hold them accountable for what the policies they do, the regions that, 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 that are selected come from us. We have to, um, the Senate actually has to um, um, vote on them and, and move them forward. So there is that very, very close relationship. And obviously they come to us for funding. So um, we want to keep a, a pretty tight uh, rope when it comes to the funding because it comes from our state taxpayers and we want to make sure that we're accountable for those dollars as well. And a big issue right now um, that we're seeing is this whole notion of uh, debt crisis and, and, and actually having all these student borrowers having the, so much uh, debt that they can't afford after they, they leave the, um, the university system. They can't afford a house, a family, or, or a car. They're delaying those decisions. So um, how do we hold the, the university accountable, making sure that they need to do the investments to attract talent, but also to hold their end of the bargain to making sure that, that people can actually afford to go there, so I think that's that's some of, some of the things that we're dealing with right now. And um, and I have a bill, for instance, on, on dealing with the, the student borrowing debt issue, uh, where we would create um, uh, an advocate for student borrowers, so so that issue can be uh, better addressed, and and then students would know um, how that process and how they can finance uh, responsibly their higher ed. Um, people have various opinions whether that's needed or not. I think it is. I'm actually still paying my student loans. I went to law school and I went to uh, the U of, U of M for, for graduate school. Um, so I know how complicated it, all the different investments you have to make to, to put it together to pay off um, your loans. So um, I think having someone on the side of students can also help. Representative Miller, your thoughts on higher education? Well, you, you know, with the student loans, I've, I've talked to a lot of students because that debt is a problem. And uh, my concern is I graduated in um, 1990 from the University of Iowa. Sorry, everyone. Uh, <laughs> but that senior year, my tuition for the whole year was $2,000. And if um, I had taken housing and meal plan and stuff like that, it would have been about another $2,000. I lived in an apartment. And so that $4,000, and what I've told students is, is if you adjust for inflation, that doesn't account for the incredible cost of going to a college. It's not even close, because adjusting for inflation, that's on the high end, maybe $7,000 a year. And yet at the same universities, we're talking into the teens and low 20s. And that's something that I believe that we have not been able to keep higher education in check on. Um, another concern of mine that I've, I've really listened to the students, I, I was shocked because I know that they have big student, lo or, or student loans, um, but their interest rates are, I heard as high as 11% on a student loan. That, that's outrageous. That's gouging. And, and I am a person that politically do not like controlling a market, but there's something egregious about that. Uh, I, heard a, I heard a statistic that the millennials that we like to pick on a lot, they will never see, they will never remove themselves from consumer debt their entire life. Large reason is, is because of these student debts and things like that. And I think that that's something that we need to get a control of. But there's a responsibility at the college. I, I'd also like to quick say that um, where I, out in my district, the jobs are in the trade schools and the customized training, and I think we also need to um, show our young people that there's opportunities out there. Electricians, I'll let, I'll let the senator talk about the opportunities as an electrician, and that's two years of hard school, very, and, and, and other things after that, 
but you can make really good money in some of that. And I think that we need to let our let our young people know that there's lots of opportunities that don't exist. Certainly, we need attorneys. My son's an engineer. We need him. Uh, but there are opportunities that don't necessarily put these students into that sort of debt. Senator, your thoughts, higher education? Um, yeah, you know, uh, to the question, you know, the university is mm -hmm. a very unique um, school system because it's in the Constitution, and I agree, accountability is the number one thing, mm -hmm. and, and it's our choice of the regions is, is critical in that regard. Um, higher ed, though, um, Representative Miller hit it perfect. Um, mm -hmm. The Trade school uh, apprenticeship programs are very dear to me. I went to Dunwoody Institute. Um, there are so many great opportunities out there. I, I, when I get to my schools and I get to talk to the kids, I tell them, you know what, for a career today, high school isn't enough. You need some type of education, but I want to direct, the, you know, the four-year degrees and other, you know, college programs are great for some, but many, many people would do great in an apprenticeship program or a two-year degree program, manufacturing, <laughs> construction, nursing. All of these areas are just uh, screaming for help and workforce. And I think that's one of the things we've been hearing a lot. And so higher ed, I, I would like to see us, you know, show, showing a little bit more to some of our trade schools right now. They've been a little bit behind in years past. And then also going back to um, with economic development, Instead of promoting so many <clears throat> new areas for jobs, let's shift some of that focus to training. And when we get that those positions filled, then we can start shifting back to creating more jobs again. I think they all kind of go together. Representative Purcell, higher education. Um, I, we've heard a lot about uh, from my colleagues here, and, and uh, I, all of the above. And uh, I, I'll, I'll take it back just a little further. Let's go back to shop class, industrial arts, as they call it in high school. We call the chop class, but I'm dating. I, I'm with you. We're of the same <laughs> dating myself. Yeah, I did, uh, but yeah, let's get get back to that where where those opportunities are there for young men and women. And uh, and and one thing we're moving up to the university level. Our recent uh, budget from the from our from the house uh, uh, proposed uh, is a tuition freeze at mm -hmm. state universities and. Well, I, I think it's the right thing to do, and, and uh, it helps us get, get a start anyway uh, on this issue of, uh, of the, the debt. It's just mm -hmm. unbelievable um, coming out of college with, you, know, you think you bought a house or something. And, and a lot of those young people won't be able to buy a house, as you indicated. Uh, won't be able to do much else in credit-wise until they get out from under that debt. And we've probably all got somebody in our family that's uh, in that situation. I know I do. Uh, so, so we'll just keep pushing away at it. But uh, we've got some of the best educational institutions in the United States, and we should be proud of that. But we have to make it affordable. 